but 2 plus 3 must be 6. Right? I mean, that's got to be right. 2 and 3 make 6. Hi guys, you're probably wondering what wondering what on earth I'm on about. Um, I am doing another podcast here, and of course no, 2 plus 3 doesn't make 6. But that is the title of my new page. Well, I say new, newish page. That is on my website, and that I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, I haven't been doing a podcast for a while, so I'm back again and getting into the swing of it. I've had a busy few weeks um, sorting out... Um, things and I suppose getting to grips with being a 25 year old in the grown up world which has been exciting and um, interesting to say the least but I'm back here now and I'm back to talk about my writing and as I've said this podcast is about the page I've just mentioned so you're probably wondering why on earth I've called it but 2 plus 3 must be 6 well it was a phrase that was said to me by somebody who had has helped me a great deal and who is a fantastic fantastic um, man and he is a man who tutored me throughout um, secondary school from sort of year nine onwards <coughs> to help me with my maths and to gain my GCSEC which is the biggest achievement so far I have ever gained um, for me personally because it's, it, it means a huge deal and this man um, knows me and knows the way I learn. So recently I went to him for a tutoring, se- tutoring session um, to do with um, career pro- progression and potentially what I might be doing in the future. And I was intrigued to know what he thought about me as a learner when he first met me. Um, when he first met me, I was a shy, very quiet young boy who <coughs> knew that his GCSEs were coming up and was finding maths real, really, really, really tricky. And I asked him, you know, when I came to you and I was that quiet young boy who really struggled with maths, what did you think? And he was saying to me that he'd never had somebody like me to tutor because I had a very different and unique way of seeing maths and my brain was wired differently to other people. And this meant that I had to use a lot of visuals, but it also meant that my processing ability was a little bit slower and it was harder for me to understand what was being asked sometimes and actually the techniques and the methods used in maths and mathematics. And he said this phrase that I've got on my title page, he said, it was like you would, you know, you, you, you saying to me, um, but two plus three must be six. And you would say it with so much conviction because your brain was wired that way thinking well that's got to be right that I would believe it for a second. Now this wasn't said as as a negative thing, it was actually quite an interesting phrase to me because I hadn't thought about it like that. Um, Now I have SPLDs and SPLDs are specific learning difficulties. Uh, That's what this page is really about, the specific learning difficulties. But the 2 plus 3 thing ties in with my dyscalculia. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is that? That is one long word. Now, dyscalculia, imagine saying that if you have dyslexia. Um, Dyscalculia is um, similar to dyslexia in terms of it affects your processing abilities and it affects your um, cognition. And it's to do with math specifically. Um, It means that when it comes to, for instance, puzzles, Um, working out sometimes instructions with things, sequences, um, remembering sequences of numbers, Um, numbers especially can be real tricky for me. So for instance when I'm doing a sum sometimes it's really hard for me to visualize how to do that sum and this has been something that um, has followed me from primary school throughout up till now and This was something that was very significant and has kind of defined me. I also have dyslexia. That hasn't defined me as much. But again, that does, you know, affect and crop up. So as you might be able to tell on this podcast, I'm talking a little bit slower and more clearly. Because with my dyslexia, when I'm speaking, sometimes it can be difficult to understand me because I muddle up the words or I talk way too fast. So I'm trying to slow myself down to dictate better when I'm doing these podcasts. Um, but So with the dyscalculia, that again, as I've just said, 
prevailed more than the dyslexia, um, or I felt it did anyway. So throughout school, it crept up and crept up and crept up. It wasn't until later on in school that I finally was identified as having this learning difficulty. Um, school was a real challenge for me because in school I was um, trying to run and run and run and run very quickly just to keep equal um, in equal distance of my fellow peers when it came to learning. So as I've gotten older, these SPLDs have developed um, instead of seeing them, as a hin seeing them as a hindrance and really struggling with them, I've turned it around and I started to view them as a way of how can I use these to help me and actually see them as a positive thing that make me me and I'm incredibly proud to have. Um, that doesn't mean to say that they don't still give me some difficulty and creep up and can be frustra frustrating. Um, they can. Um, they still do and when it comes to career progression there are certain tests I have to do and they are definitely still barring me from that but nevertheless I am somebody who is very determined the dyscalculia got in the way a lot with my GCSE maths but I got there in the end and I wanted to give back what I've got from other people now this determination didn't just come from me it came from people believing in me and giving me that support and really tapping into the way that I learn and they have done so much for me, um, none less than my parents. I want to give a little bit back and help other people like me and children like me. And as well as working in schools and helping children in those schools, I also wanted to write this page as a way of hoping that somebody will read it who maybe works in the education system or their family um, who have children or family members who struggle like I did and they will be able to use this information to help them support those people. So this page will focus on um, those SPLDs. It talks about the dyslexia and circumstances around, circumstan circumstances, you see it's kicking in, around that and it will also talk about the dyscalculia and colorblind. So it will sort of mold it all into one. Um, and I mean, I don't really want to give too much more away. Um, I will say that it delves into experiences that I have had and it was very fun for me to write. Um, it was quite difficult because I was putting a lot out there, but I believe that it was needed and is needed to help other people. So, I'm going to stop it there. I mean, I think this is probably one of the short, shortest podcasts I've done. It is. It's only seven minutes. Wowzers. But I don't want to rattle on too much and kind of bore you guys. But um, what I will say is, um, well, I... There is a little bit more to say, I suppose, actually. What I will say is that um, if you are reading this or have read this and you do know somebody with dyscalculia, dyslexia, or is colorblind and relates to the things I talk about in here, please um, read it to them, show them, use the information to help you, because it's really important. Dyscalculia especially is something that is actually not written on much. Um, when I tried to do, look at it for an assignment in my uh, university studies um, two years ago, I actually could not do that assignment on it and had to change to something else that I was talking about to do with SPLDs um, because there just wasn't enough information on it to write about um, and use. So it's actually a very um, not well-known um, difficulty, um, but it's something that can be really, really frustrating and really, really um, have an impact on somebody. Um, it's, but it also, in time, you do see it, as I've said, as a fantastic part of you. Now, if you'd asked me that um, at the age of 14, I would have turned around and gone, no, I hate this. How can it be fantastic? Take it out of me. I don't want to have dyscalculia. And that was very much the mentality that I had. But actually, I have turned that around and I want other people to do the same. Dyscalculia is a fantastic thing because as much as it can be real, real, really difficult when it comes to maths, when you have dyscalculia, it also allows you to see the world in a very unique way. So some things that are easy to people, um, especially when it comes to maths, you find really tricky, but you are, are um, your brain actually is much better visually and has to be more creative. So therefore, you become a more creative person. And I think if I didn't have these SPLDs, something like my writing would never have taken off in terms of I would never have found it and loved it and loved to do it. Um, these SPLDs really have shaped me. And, you know, without wanting to 
rant, even though I realise I am. But I, my passion is 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 um, quite high for this particular area. Um, without having to, without wanting to rant, there's something that are really, really important and should be celebrated more. Um, not just labelled as oh they're going to need support and then they're their sort of approach labeled as in yeah they yes these people who have these these individuals young people like myself who have them and will always have them will need support when it comes to learning but actually let's celebrate that let's celebrate these people who have this let's celebrate their unique brain and actually let's use them in the classroom yes let's use their way of thinking because you never know actually if i ask them well how would you do this and solve this problem and we help them get the you know the um get them on the track and actually if they show us how they've solved this problem and the ant you know um they've got it right then actually they could transfer that skill onto somebody else and help somebody else so it's actually a fantastic thing to have and that's really what i wanted this podcast to really celebrate and um i think i have drilled that in hard enough haven't i guys um so thank you for listening um i may do another podcast about SEN. it's a fantastically um brilliant field and it's something that I'm incredibly passionate about so if you like this podcast then please please um, feel free to share it uh, like it comment on it maybe um, you know just give it some love and attention it would be fantastic if you guys could do that um, any comments would be appreciated particularly about um, how you fi- have found my sl- um, lessened quickness of speaking and hopefully see there's dyslexia lessened quickness of speaking not proper english is it hey ho i'm hoping you guys have found that better that you could understand a little bit better because i realized that you know i do talk really quickly um so thank you guys for listening and um i shall hopefully um see you guys um on in the comment section and see that this has been shared um celebrate splds because they're fantastic already thank